one of the things that I often think about is, is that the access most people have, so students in particular have, to, to the research that you might do or anyone might do is the finished product. Exactly. Right? Is that this is the paper that got published in the journal that's draft 50 or 60 or 70, and they never see draft one or two. And I'm wondering if you can kind of speak a little bit to this idea of, of that process, right, of, 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 of crafting a, uh, a manuscript and, and how it changes from kind of the initial sort of ideas and sort of the rough drafts to, to what they might see in the finished product and, and maybe help sort of demystify that whole process and, and what that looks like. Well, clearly the process is different now than it used to be. Before there were word processors and computers, uh, what determined when the manuscript went off to press was the secretary Thelma at, when I was a faculty member at Northwestern, they, they used to have whiteout. And when you, when you had things that were more changes than whiteout, you used to put strips of paper over the top of the paper. And, and there would be so many changes that the paper would look like a tablet. And finally, Thelma would say that she can't, this is the last round of changes because I can't get it through the roller of the typewriter anymore. And then you have, and then I'm gonna have to start over. If you're not gonna, if this is not the last change, then I have to start over. So now, you know, it's almost a, uh, it's both a blessing and a curse that you, that, that you can change as many times as you want. Uh, in my own personal style in writing is I try actually to write through something without any citations and without any uh, too, being too academic the first, the first time through. So I actually want the core to read like a real paper or a real, it might be interesting. And then, of course, if you're going to send it to a journal, it has to have all the documentation, the citations, and everything, and then you just and then and then typically add that in later. I find that if I write in the academies, you know, Smith seventy two, Jones thirty eight, and uh, so forth, mm -hmm. you uh, it it sort of stifles the whole the whole process. It's an interesting. I think it's an interesting technique in the sense of it sounds to me like what you're doing is you're getting all your ideas out. Exactly. And, and obviously your ideas are informed by the literature because that's partly where they come from. They also come from your own experiences. Sure. But to not be encumbered at the initial stage with trying to link it to anything other than your own understanding. And it seems to me like that's a, a much better way to sort of have your own voice come out as opposed to somebody else's. It's much easier to take your voice out than it is to get it back in. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. so I, I really think that it's much better to, uh, uh, to start that, that way. Great, great, yeah. great.